Uh, my part, what I will try to do is step back from uh, uh, what has been said so far and try to explain this program from the point of view of a basic science institute and why it should be involved in this, uh, in this particular exercise. I will speak specifically about the program involving brain disorders. You just heard from Sanjeev about the social and economic impact of mental illness. And he's also explained to you what he and his colleagues plan to do in terms of setting up clinical cohorts to map the development and progression of mental illness. Uh, whenever you have a problem as complex as the brain, it is useful to break it down into manageable uh, and analytical bits. And one of the ways of doing this is shown on this slide. One can think of normal human behavior as the final output of the brain. And that output is dependent upon the physiology or the functioning of the neurons that constitute it. These neurons themselves, along with the glial cells, are put together to form circuits that form critical and important connections. And these circuits, in, that in turn, are composed of individual cells with their own molecular physiology and function. So if we want to understand mental illness, one would need to break this down, uh, the problem of brain function, into these different levels. Uh, the brain, of course, undergoes development. And during this process, cells get connected into form circuits. And these then start operating as one develops and gives you behavior. In addition, after development, the brain also undergoes changes in, in structure and function called plasticity, which may manifest in an abnormal situation as disease. Now, what Sanjeev described uh, just now in his talk are approaches that allow you to assess the function of the brain at these two <laughs> levels over here, namely the behavior of the, the, the collective behavior of the brain as well as the physiology of the different parts that constitute the brain. The question that arises is what is the best approach to understand how the cells in the brain function and how they get together to form circuits. As he also mentioned, the brain presents a particular problem. There is no part of it that is dispensable, and so you can't go out and ask for a biopsy of the brain that you can study in your lab. And the advent of modern stem cell technology has allowed a way around this which you would like to exploit to understand how the brain functions at the level of individual cells talking to each other. And the approach is shown over here uh, in essence. What you do is to start with a sample of peripheral cells and using the technology of modern, uh, modern stem cell technology, you convert it into a dedifferentiated iPSC cell. And that's what's shown over here. Once you have an iPSC cell, you can use methods that are now available to convert these cells into neural cells in culture. And this can then, these cells can then be studied in great detail in your lab to try and ask questions about how the cells are wired together and how they may function. Uh, and this slide shows you an example of that. So you start with stem cells that are shown over here on the right and the left. And as you progress over a number of days, they start developing, differentiating, and give you ultimately something that looks like neurons that are connected to each other. And modern technology also allows you to have neural cells along with uh, neurons along with glial cells uh, in the same culture. Now, once you have a, a, a situation such as this, how do you dissect the function of what is going on in the brain? Now, the fundamental unit of interaction in the brain is the connection between the various cells in it, be it neurons with each other or glial cells with neurons. And the, the, the key unit that allows this interaction is the synapse, where there is a cell that sends a signal to another cell and allows communication to proceed. And one way of thinking about mental illness at, a, at, a, at this sort of level is to ask what abnormalities are there in the delivery of a signal by the presynaptic neuron and the, 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 the receiving of that signal by the postsynaptic cell. So in this program, we plan to analyze this in some considerable detail to try and understand what are the differences between normal humans and patients who have some form of mental illness as described in of the various syndromes that Sanjeev described. And the way we try to, we're planning to do this is to ask several questions about the basic biology of the synapse and how it is different between normal people and, and people with mental illness. We would like to ask if there are differences in the way synapses develop and what their structure. We would like to ask if there are differences in the chemistry of the synapse. Is there a defect in the release of neurotransmitter? Is there a difference in the types and number of receptors in the postsynaptic membrane and how they function? And of course, are there any metabolic differences between neurons in a normal person and one that has mental illness? 
Now, in addition to studying the development and chemistry of the synapse, one would also like to know how well or how differently they function between normal people and people with mental illness. And in order to do that, we, uh, in, uh, we, my, my colleague Shona, who's not here today, uh, is an expert in, in analyzing neuronal function using approaches such as electrophysiology and, and high resolution calcium imaging. And we will be using these approaches to understand how neurons function uh, in the dish from patients with particular sorts of illnesses. So this is about the cell biology of how neurons might be different uh, in patients with mental illness. Of course, one would like to know why these differences arise and, and what might be the molecular basis of it, because that in turn allows you to think about ways of trying to either diagnose it better or to develop treatments for mental illness. Now, of course, we're all very different from each other. No two people in this room are different. We behave in slightly different ways from each other. And we're also, if you look at our genomes, there are differences in the genetic code uh, between you, me, and any other person in this room. The question really is, if we were to find differences in, in the way the brain function, do they arise from differences in the genetic code? Do they arise from men, uh, environmental influ influences? Or what might the basis be of the differences we might observe? And that is, just, one can think about it in the following way, that any phenotypic variations one might see in populations may arise from altered gene expression. And these may come either from genetic differences or from environmental inputs. And to try and get to the bottom of this in the context of this program, we do plan to analyze all of the families and the patients and control that are involved for genetic variations across most of the common variants that Sanjeev referred to uh, in, 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 his, in his talk. We also plan to determine the whole genome sequence for all the patients from whom iPSC cell lines would, will be made. And this will allow us in the future to develop gene editing methods that will allow, that will allow more detailed analysis of the importance of any one of these variants that you might detect in determining disease outcome uh, in this particular setting. So to summarize this part of what I said, and to go back to my original diagram about dissecting brain function, uh, in this continuum of connections that results in human behavior, uh, we have a group of people who will analyze uh, uh, how the brain functions in this domain of physiology and behavior, and a group of us here on this campus who will interact closely with them to analyze how individual cells in the brain might be different and how they might connect together to form circuits. Uh, and this, therefore, is the summary of the program uh, you know, across all of the three institutes that are involved, NIMHANS, uh, uh, INSTEM, and NCBS. If you are a patient with mental illness, you would like to know a few basic things. First of all, you'd like to know what's wrong with me and Sanjeev referred to the problems in arriving at that conclusion. You'd like to know, will I get better, or will my illness progress? And of course, you'd like to have as many treatment options as possible. And I would suggest that give, getting answers to these three questions, there are a number of key things that might help. First of all, it would help to know what are the principles governing development of the brain and its response to the environment. It would help to know what the organization of fundamental cellular units in the brain is. And finally, it would help to know genetic variation in humans and how it contributes uh, to human brain function. And I would suggest to you that the ADBS program will, will likely to be a link, and I hope it will be a link, between understanding these basic aspects of how the brain functions and developing therapies that are useful for human uh, patients.